no way we weren't doing an episode talking about this one. Yikes. Welcome to the show. Welcome back to After Hours, a weekly, sometimes daily show. This one today is, that was one of those that if you don't know, you uh, you probably need to know about it, because if you're around my age, my generation, you probably grew up watching Nickelodeon. This new documentary, TV mini-series on HBO Max called Quiet on the Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV. Now, before we get to comments, thoughts, concerns on the show, let's pan over and give you a little trailer taste so you know what you're getting into. Alright, so to start, for those who do not know about Quiet on the Set, I'm just going to play a quick, quick trailer so you get a little taste of what this horror story is about. They hear that Brian Peck was a sexual predator. It made me wonder immediately about who was being hurt. Who it is, when it happened, where it happened, I have no idea. It wasn't dealing with anybody on the shows or anything, right? It was a child actor. On one of our shows? Yes. Drake Bell. <sighs> well done. Well put together documentary. All right. Pam back out. So, quiet on the set. It is crazy. What the the whole the premise of this documentary is it's a docu-series that uncovers the toxic culture behind some of the most iconic children's shows of the late 1990s and early 2000s. So going into this, I was like, I, I didn't investigate it a lot. I just was like, all right, I'm gonna you know, see what this is about. Uh, someone had suggested it, someone was talking about it, and I saw it was getting some pretty good attention on uh, YouTube, social media, all the platforms. So I went into it without looking at it. Little did I know, I thought there was only three, four episodes. There's a fifth one coming out April 7th, so I'm not even done with it. Definitely one of those that I, you have to get, I can't get past it. Like, I have to talk about it. For those that don't know, Nickelodeon, a lot of the, the background of this was all revolved around Dan Schneider. Dan Schneider is the one of the creators of the set All That on Nickelodeon. One of the biggest producers at the time for Nickelodeon and the Children's Show Network. So all that, Drake and Josh, iCarly, The Amanda Show, Amanda Bynes was a big part of this. Amanda Bynes was like his his star. And some of the crazy messed up things about it was the fact that if you look back, watch this documentary, they show all the clips. There's a lot of what all that was, was like a sketch skit show. So no real premise, lots of comedy sketches whatever but majority of it and you remember like the slime that was the majority of you know the insin insinuation of a very sexual shot on a lot of these actresses and actors so ariana grande was on there amanda Bynes, and there's even one set or or sketch where on the iCarly show, they can't open almost like a yogurt tube. Then they pan over, and once the girl gets it open, it just fires on her face. So it was the dark side of it was like the Dan Schneider and the producers were just getting away 
with all of these terrible things that like you know to kids is probably just funny but to adult humor they're like how are they how are they able to do this yeah it was hard it's hard to watch it's very difficult to watch but it's also crazy being you know 20 years out from that being 31 watching this when i was uh, between 10 to 12 years old ish i remember being watching drake and josh watching and now hannah montana was on disney uh but just all of these children's shows but they're like teenagers and being like man i want to do that like that looks like the life and little did i know that was there was some pedophilia going on in the worst kind of way because like the ones the, the biggest takeaway from it too was like the people that they trusted the most were like oh yeah they're just you know they're like a dad to us on set like those were there's two or three of them that were terrible human beings another takeaway on it is i definitely remember growing up being like hey mom dad can i go spend the night at so-and-so's house so you got a friend from school and they invited you to come have a spend the night party it was always a no if my parents didn't know their parents or hadn't met them yet and i remember being a kid being like what I, he's a good kid what why can't i do this and just the innocence and then the unknowing of like potential of what could possibly change your life or rock your world for forever and set you on a way different course now being a dad I get that and and knowing the evil in the world i see that that yeah i would probably do the same i would not let my child go anywhere unless i knew that it was a and like really knew it was a safe environment the coolest i guess coolest one of the the, the episode two when you get into that is when drake bell comes on and starts talking about his situation i absolutely hated seeing his dad talk about it because essentially his dad was his manager and as drake started getting more fame he was you know traveling around the band all the things his dad was like very suspicious of one man i think his name was brian he this brian guy started like putting it in his ear drake's ear that like his dad can't be his manager like it's not good for him he's seen it before and all drake bell knows is like just to trust this guy so he makes this i guess lie up about his dad his dad is like hey i don't like the way this guy's touching him while he's on set working like almost super too friendly they showed a clip of him doing the same thing to leonardo dicaprio as a kid where it was just like he you know he's like grabbing his arms or like he said he would like dress him and stuff like when it's like that's just not appropriate don't touch my kid that way totally understandable well this brian guy knew he, he was like i i need to get him out of the picture so essentially he did he got him he convinced drake to that his dad was no good for his fame his his career and he kicked his dad off of it. And his dad said, and his dad's testimony was like, just heartbreaking to see the, it just through the tears and knowing like what he could have prevented, but he didn't want to, cause he wanted what, what his son wanted. So it was just a kick ass dad. Allowed it, but it, it very much tainted Drake Bell for the rest of his life. So he, his dad said before, to like before he goes and makes him his new manager and spends all his time with him he told his mom and they were i think they were separated at the time but he was like don't ever let them be alone together well that didn't come to fruition so his mom with all the uh you know shooting on set whatever there was times where he would end up staying at this guy's house because he that guy would tr take him from work from the set and drive him across town to his home but he convinced drake and his mom like hey i'm just you can just stay at my house on my couch uh, you know it's late by the time it, whatever whatever the excuse was it's raining the weather you got to be back here in the morning it's just easier if you come stay at my house I'm like and they trusted him at the time their dad didn't but they did and yeah you'll when you watch this you'll hear drake's first time talking about it and he pretty much says think of all the worst things you can think of and the first time it happened was he was asleep on the couch and woke up to being assaulted it's just crazy thinking like that at that time watching that show like, man this kid's got it all little did you know he you know behind the scenes like was getting abused and this guy was so corrupt that he was like if i'll take this away from you if you say anything but he was also super apologetic it was like i'm so sorry it'll never happen again that wasn't the truth it happened all the time over and over and a lot of this show is just centralized around 
Dan Schneider and the weird stuff that he would do. It's almost like a joke to him. I mean, they even made the Nickelodeon uh, logo was a foot. And in episode four, they get into, yeah, he's kind of got a foot fetish where he's asking kids to send pictures of their feet. Ariana Grande one time in the episode was sucking on her toes. And it just got insane with it. And so there's a lot of testimonies involved throughout it. Like I said, I haven't seen the last episode. It comes out April 7th. But my lord, it is it is it is quite the journey to watch. And yeah, you just you can never be too trusting, especially in these settings. Uh, Amanda Bynes has kind of gone off the deep end, I guess you could say. Drake Bell since all this. I mean, a lot of this happened before Drake and Josh Pilot episode started. So, you know, he's going through some mental craziness during that. But like. I have you haven't seen Drake Bell a lot since. It's like they're just they're totally corrupted now, and it's hard to move past it. Well, he finally talks about it here, and he just released a new song, a new music video. So I haven't seen that one yet. Plan on watching it, checking that out. It's crazy. I would love to know. I would love to know more stories from others. Like Amanda Bynes doesn't come on and talk. Ariana Grande doesn't. Ariana Grande is like the most successful of them all. Obviously, she's a list big time. I would love to hear her thoughts on how that whole thing went. Yeah, crazy. IMDb gave this documentary a 7.8 out of 10. It's very eye-opening. And actually, you see, it was funny. Tim Dillon was talking in one of his shows about it. And there, there's a video on YouTube where Dan Schneider tried to come out and get ahead of it. Not really get ahead of it. He posted a 20-minute interview after the show came out. It's so bad. Like, he he's definitely has an agenda here. And he's not apologetic he just knows that like he's about to take a hit and he need he really needs something else in the news so that this isn't the big story but there's no way this isn't the big story especially for people of our generation who watched all these shows now seeing kind of the dark side behind the scenes it is pretty eye-opening and very very scary as a parent because i mean how selfish how fucking selfish do you have to be you literally take the innocence away from a kid quiet on set the dark side of kids tv highly suggest watching it just to see what what life was like on set back in the day when the, the, they had the big the kids shows coming up and all these kids stars and fame and yeah there's a lot a lot of actors and actresses that are here now that went through that uh, there's no telling we're just scratching the surface of what actually happened kind of a dark after hours episode had to talk about it had to get you on it if you hadn't seen it definitely worth a watch on hbo max quiet on set the dark side of kids tv thank you for tuning in like and subscribe but most importantly do not forget i love you i'm proud of you peace